In the last decade, technology has taken on a crucial role in Vietnamese education. Technological advancements have led to tremendous innovations in teaching and learning, allowing educators to create personalized learning pathways with only a few clicks. Numerous educational software has been increasingly customized to meet the needs of individual students. Since the onset of the COVID-19 crisis, online learning, especially, has raised Vietnamese institutions' profile and affirmed the effectiveness of applying technology in education. High average results in the National High School Exam, the Intel International Science and Technology Examination, and the International and Regional Olympics have encouraged education to continue developing in a way that promotes students' application of knowledge to solve practical problems rather than merely memorizing the content of textbooks. Despite these significant advances, innovative applications of technology in Vietnamese education remain inconsistent and scarce. Li Chen and Marginson noted that, in practice, Internationalization activities are fragmented, inconsistent and ad hoc, and overall are rather ineffective. These inconsistencies in Vietnamese education can be better understood in the context of the global digital revolution. Digital technologies emerged in the late stages of industrialization and have become central to further developing education in East and Southeast Asia. In this new era, Information technology became a central, albeit divisive, aspect of modern life. American sociologist Daniel Bell claims that society will come to rely on the economics of information rather than goods, resulting in the formation of a new class, the knowledge class. French sociologist Emile Durkheim, in his efforts to understand the effects of industrialization on education, introduced the concept of the division of labor. The division of labor, Durkheim explained, was a separation of work into specific specialized tasks. Workers focused on learning occupational skills and eventually distinct social groups formed. This division of labor, Durkheim argues, further led to differences in morality between social groups. The common moral beliefs of an agrarian society he suggested, are different from those in a technologically advanced, information-driven society. Durkheim observed that as industrialization progresses, the division of labor also intensifies and results in uneven social and economic development. In East and Southeast Asia, these socio-economic differences have become especially clear as education has moved online during the global spread of COVID-19. In this video, we focus on how digital technologies have affected education in East and Southeast Asia. We begin by examining the digital divide in East and Southeast Asia. Then, we consider the effects of digital technologies on Vietnamese education. We conclude with suggestions for ways digital technologies could be used more effectively to improve Vietnamese education. The digital divide follows the uneven developmental patterns produced during the process of industrialization. This concept refers to unequal access to digital technologies or information. This gap can be seen within nations or between nations. Low income and education levels further widen the gap over time, as families with higher educational attainment are more likely to have access to the internet and advanced digital technologies. A study conducted by the National Telecommunications and Information Administration NTIA, from 1997 to 1998 showed that the gap in access to digital information widened from 7.8% to 25% respectively for those with or without higher education. Race is an additional factor that deepens the digital divide, especially in multicultural nations with a high rate of immigration, such as the US or Canada. In East Asia, although digital inequality is evident, the gap is not as extreme as in Southeast Asian countries. A 2003 Digital Access Index project DAI, by the International Telecommunications Union ITU, revealed that East Asian countries such as Japan, 
South Korea, Taiwan, and Hong Kong made it to the top of the list of high access countries. Meanwhile, in ASEAN, digital inequalities become more evident during the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite significant efforts to reform government policies to keep up with global development, in their December 2020 report entitled "Estimating Digital Connectivity During the COVID-19 Pandemic," UNICEF and ITU show that 32% of school-aged children in the region did not have internet at home. Another UNICEF survey of 10 ASEAN countries revealed that 61% of students did not gain digital literacy at school, as teachers are unfamiliar with new technologies and require further training. The following graph clearly reveals the digital divide between East Asia and ASEAN. In Vietnam, the government is actively pushing to develop a knowledge-based economy. It has attempted to follow the East Asian model to transform the economy. But the gap in Vietnamese and East Asian modernization remains wide. The government has not, however, put enough attention on information technology and human capital development. Additionally, access to global information in urban parts of Vietnam has improved rapidly, but access in rural areas remains low. The government supported the rapid creation of a national online education system to cope with the COVID-19 pandemic. But the use of technology remains ineffective and highlights the negative effects of the digital divide on education in Vietnam. Overcoming the digital gap would transform Vietnam's economy and lead to a new era for Vietnamese society. In order to achieve this goal, key priorities need to be set. First, internet access must be universal and affordable. Second, there needs to be a space for competitiveness so necessary innovations can develop and reach their potential. Additionally, the education system must emphasize digital and technological skills for you to adapt and catch up with the digital transformation. Governments should also further create a safety net for those displaced by new trends in modernization, such as AI or automation. Lastly, developing nations such as Vietnam need to improve financial inclusion through technology, but also adapt and prepare their citizens to manage the risk that comes along with it. The division of labor that has come together with industrialization has led to a further division between developed and developing countries. In ASEAN, Durkheim's observation is especially relevant as industrialization has lagged behind wealthier countries. In Vietnam, the majority of the population are low-skilled workers. This is particularly problematic in the education sector, since teachers lack sufficient education backgrounds to utilize technology effectively in teaching. As a result, the digital divide has appeared dramatically in the national education sector of Vietnam. A handful of elite institutions are equipped with advanced technology, whereas the majority of schools still lack access. The vast majority of schools in Vietnam lack competency in ICT. Pham note that most schools had only a few classrooms with computers, projectors, headphones, and speakers, and as many as 80% of teachers rate their ICT competency poorly. Teachers generally use only PowerPoint 90% or word processing 80% to prepare the lessons. In addition, 55% edit audio or visual materials, 44% use hot potatoes, and 40% teach point mapping. The Country Report of Vietnam for UNESCO's Digital Kids Asia Pacific Project additionally reveals that students lack support at school and at home to develop digital literacy. Students have not received much encouragement from parents, teachers, siblings, and peers. The Vietnam Country Report explains, and Vietnam scores the lowest among all countries in terms of students being encouraged to explore and learn through the internet all the time. This report highlights the huge role parents and teachers play in supporting the development of effective study habits using digital materials, tools, and resources. Without their approval and guidance, students find it hard to fully utilize educational materials. A heavily content-based 
traditional curriculum has contributed to students' mindset, since students are evaluated mostly based on their academic performance and exam results. As a result, students, parents, and teachers neglect practical skills, including soft skills, communication skills, and technological skills. In Vietnam Digital Revolution, there are a handful of educational institutions leading the way. Ho Chi Minh University of Technologies and Education has implemented their own e-learning and teaching system based on learning management system like LMS, FHQ LMS, and Google Classroom. According to a survey conducted by the Quality Assurance Department in 2020, 90% of lecturers use LMS, FHQ LMS, Google Classroom, or other systems to teach online. This number fall dramatically with synchronous learning, however, to under 12%. Vietnam national curriculums continue to emphasize the memorization of theoretical knowledge for tests, and as a result, students and teachers are not motivated to apply technologies in the classroom. In addition, the number of topics taught per college degree far exceeds that of other countries. For example, a four-year BSc in Information Technologies at Ho Chi Minh University of Technologies consists of 47 to 49 subjects or equivalents and is only valued at 152 credit, whereas an identical degree as Latrobe University in Australia consists of only 18 to 24 courses and is worth 360 credit over three years. This content healthy exam central curriculums is often called the silent learning killer. There are additionally few international regulations to govern the provisions of intercontinental evaluator, nor are there are policies in place to recognize the results of those evaluations. Despite the fact that Vietnamese system of higher education is open to international and regional accreditor. Despite the potential for HEIS to explore technology based innovation, particularly in the context of the country board and deep digital platform outreach, universities have not taken advantage of such opportunity. As a result, several government funded strategic mobility programs for university lecture has been implemented with moderate success and often fail to achieve their goals. There are a handful of K-12 schools revolutionizing the use of technologies in the classroom. A leading example is Saigon South International School. Saigon South International School is known as the first Apple Distinguished School in Vietnam and additionally has an ICT director and separate coaches for elementary, middle and high school. Share iPad are provided for students to use in first and second grade under the guidance of homeroom teacher. This expands to a one-to-one -one iPad program in the third grade. After fourth grade, all students are required to purchase an Apple laptop. This laptop later serves multiple educational purposes on a daily basis. Saigon South International Schools also use a variety of software in daily teaching activities. In language classes, students upload their audio file to SoundCloud, a web application where teachers can enter separate comments for different parts of the audio. A project that requires multimedia collaboration, Saigon South International School students use Explain Everything, a whiteboard application that allows them to create real-time visual presentation on the cloud. Although technologies has been applied widely in school, the above studies reveal that the applications of technology in school is still limited to simple tools, leaving many sophisticated websites and applications untouched. Overall, the application of digital technologies in Vietnam remains underdeveloped and access to digital technologies is poor throughout much of the country. Although there are many readily available online curricula globally, poor access to digital technologies and the low qualification of teachers pose a serious challenge for Vietnam as the nation transitions from an agrarian to a knowledge-based economy.
Adopting a new curriculum requires teachers to learn new ways of using course materials, and they must further learn the new methods of evaluating students. To conclude, in this video, we have argued that digital technologies have deepened the inequality in Vietnam as a result of uneven development and a global division of labor emerging at this stage of industrialization.